Hey everybody, I hope all is well. A great Thursday morning to you. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. I'm reading Bible in one year. I just finished reading 1 Kings chapter 9 yesterday where I read about God's answer to Solomon and the presence of Solomon in Hiram. Today I am drinking raspberry zinger tea. And to pair with that, I have an assortment of banana chips and mixed berries. There's blueberries, cranberries, and cherries in here. All right, the benefits of this raspberry zinger tea is that it protects against cancer. It has great heart and circulatory benefits and it is a uterine tonic. All right, before I eat, let's pray. Dear Gracious and Heavenly Father, I thank you for this drink and food, for the health and nourishment of my body, for Christ's sake. I thank you for my daily bread, and I ask that the Holy Spirit fill me with wisdom and understanding as I'm refreshed by your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, of course, you guys know that I've come with some more verses to give you peace during this time. And the first one comes from Luke chapter 12, verse 25 and 26. It says, Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very thing, why do you worry about the rest? The second one comes from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. It says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So you guys meditate on these scriptures and it'll bring peace to you. All right, you guys go get your tea and sip with me. I'm going to get started. Got my book holder stand, so I won't be straining to see the words. And I'm reading out of the New King James Version. And um, I'm on day 103 of Bible in one year. And I am in First uh, Kings chapter 10. Verse 1 through 29. Okay. Now when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue, with camels that bore spices, with very much gold and precious stones. And she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. So Solomon answered all of her questions. There was nothing so difficult for the king that he could not explain it to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his servants, the service of his waiters and their apparel, his cupbearers, and his entryway by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. Then she said to the king, It was a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. However, I did not believe the words until I came and saw with my own eyes. And indeed, the half was not told to me. Your wisdom and prosperity exceed the fame of which I heard. Happy are your men, and happy are these your servants who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God, who delighted in you, setting you on the throne of Israel, because the Lord has loved Israel forever. Therefore, he made you king to do justice and righteousness. Then the king gave the king... Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold, spices, and great quantity and precious stones. There never again came such abundance of spices as the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Also, the ships of Hiram, which brought gold from Ophir, brought great quantities of almug wood and precious stones from Ophir. And the king made steps of the almug wood for the house of the Lord, and for the king's house also harps and string instruments for singers. 
There never again came such almug wood, nor has the like been seen to this day. Now, King Solomon gave the Queen of Sheba all she desired, whatever she asked, besides what Solomon had given her according to the royal generosity. So she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. The weight of gold that came to Solomon yearly was 666 talents of gold. Besides that from the traveling merchants, from the income of traders, from all the kings of Arabia, and from the governors of the country. And King Solomon made 200 large shields of hammered gold. 600 shekels of gold went into each shield. He also made 300 shields of hammered gold. Three minnows of gold went into each shield. The king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with pure gold. The throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round at the back. There were armrests on either side of the place of the seat, and two lions stood beside the armrest. Twelve lions stood there, one on each side of the six steps. Nothing like this has been made for any other kingdom. All King Solomon's drinking vessels were gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold. Not one was silver for this was accounted as nothing in the days of Solomon. For the king had merchant ships at sea with the fleet of Hiram. Once every three years the merchant ships came bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, and monkeys. So King Solomon surpassed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. Now all the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. Each man brought his present, articles of silver and gold, garments, armor, spices, horses, and mules, at a set rate year by year. And Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen whom he stationed in the chariot cities and with the king in Jerusalem. The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones, and he made cedar trees as abundant as the sycamores which are in the lowland. Also, Solomon had horses imported from Egypt and Keba. The king's merchants brought them in Keba at the current price. Now a chariot that was imported from Egypt cost 600 shekels of silver and a horse of 150, and thus through their agents, they exported them to all the kings of the Hittites and the king of Syria. First Kings chapter 11, verse one through 43. But King Solomon loved many foreign women as well as the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites, from the nations of whom the Lord had said to the children of Israel, You shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you. Surely they will turn away your hearts after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love, and he had 700 wives, princes, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not fully follow the Lord, as did his father David. Then Solomon built a high place of for Shemosh, the abomination of Moab, on the hill that is east of Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the people of Ammon. And he did likewise for all his foreign wives, who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. So the Lord became angry with Solomon, because his heart had turned from the Lord God of Israel, who had peered to him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he did not keep what the Lord had commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Because you have done this, and have not kept my covenant and my statutes which I commanded you, I will surely tear away the kingdom from you and give it to your servant. Nevertheless, I will not do it in your days. For the sake of your date, father David, I will tear it out of the hand of your son. However, I will not tear away the whole kingdom. I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. Now the Lord raised up an adversary against Solomon. Hadad the Edomite, he was a descendant of the king in Edom. For it happened when David was in Edom and Joab, the commander of the army, had gone up to bury the slain after he had killed every male in Edom. 
because for six months Joah remained there with all Israel, until he had cut down every male in Edom. That Hadad fled to go to Egypt, he and certain Edomites of his father's servants with him. Hadad was still a little child. Then they arose from Midian and came to Paran, and they took men with them from Paran and came to Egypt, to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who gave him a house, a portion, food for him, and gave him land. And Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave him as wife the sister of his own wife, that is, the sister of Queen Taphines. Then the sister of Taphines bore him Genoboth, his son, whom Taphines weaned in Pharaoh's house. And Genoboth was in Pharaoh's household among the sons of Pharaoh. So when Hadad heard in Egypt that David rested with his fathers, and that Joab, the commander of the army, was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let me depart, that I may go to my own country. Then Pharaoh said to him, but what have you lacked with me, that suddenly you seek to go to your own country? So he answered, Nothing, but do let me go anyway. And God raised up another adversary against him, Razon, the son of Eladad, who had fled from his lord, Hadadazer, king of Zobah. So he gathered men to him and became captain over a band of raiders, when David killed those at Zobah. And they went to Damascus and dwelt there and reigned in Damascus. He was an adversary of Israel all the days of Solomon, besides the trouble that Hadad caused, and he abhorred Israel and reigned over Syria. Then Solomon's servant Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephraimite, from Zerida, whose mother's name was Zorah, a widow, also rebelled against the king. And this is what caused him to rebel against the king. Solomon had built the Milo and repaired the damages to the city of David, his father. The man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor, and Solomon, seeing that the young man was industrious, made him the officer over the labor force of the house of Joseph. Now it happened at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ahijah, the Shilamite, met him on the way, and he had clothed himself with a new garment, and the two were alone in the field. Then Ahijah took hold of the new garment that was on him and tore it into twelve pieces, and he said to Jeroboam, Take for yourself ten pieces, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will tear the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to you. But he shall have one tribe for the sake of my servant David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen out of the tribes of Israel. Because they have forsaken me and worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, Shemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the people of Ammon and have not walked in my ways to do what is right in my eyes and keep my statutes and my judgments, as did his father David. However, I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, because I have made him ruler all of the days of his life. And for the sake of my servant David, whom I chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes, but I will take the kingdom out of his hand, son's hand, and give it to you ten tribes. And to his son I will give one tribe, that my servant David may always have a lamp before me in Jerusalem. The city which I have chosen for myself, I put my name there. So I will take you, and you shall reign over all your heart's desires, and you shall be king over Israel. Then it shall be, if you heed all that I command you, walk in my ways, and do what is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as my servant David did, then I will be with you and build for you an enduring house as I built for David and will give Israel to you. And I will afflict the descendants of David because of this, but not forever. Solomon therefore sought to kill Jeroboam, but Jeroboam arose and fled to Egypt, to Shishak, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon, all that he did, and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the Acts of Solomon? And the period that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. Then Solomon rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. His father and Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his place. First Kings chapter 12, verse 1 through 33. <clears throat> And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had gone to Shechem to make him king. So it happened when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard it, he was still in Egypt from 
for he had fled from the presence of King Solomon and had been dwelling in Egypt, that they sent and called him. Then Jeroboam and the whole assembly of Israel came and spoke to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now therefore lighten the burdensome servant of your father and his heavy yoke, which he put on us, and we will serve you. So he said to them, Depart for three days, then come back to me. And the people departed. The king Rehoboam consulted the elders who stood before his father Solomon while he still lived. And he said, How do you advise me to answer these people? And they spoke to him, saying, If you will be a servant to these people today, and serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. But he rejected the advice which the elders had given him, and consulted the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him. And he said to them, What advice do you give? How should we answer this people who had spoken to me, saying, Lighten the yoke which your father put on us? Then the young men who had grown up with him spoke to him, saying, Thus you should speak to this people who have spoken to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you make it lighter on us. Thus you shall say to them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's waist. And now, whereas my father put a heavy yoke on you, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had directed, saying, Come back to me the third day. Then the king answered the people roughly, and rejected the advice which the elders had given him. And he spoke to them according to the advice of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. So the king did not listen to the people, for the turn of the events was from the Lord, that he might fulfill his word, which the Lord had spoken to Ahijah, the Shilonite, to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Now when all Israel saw that the king did not listen to them, the people answered the king, saying, What share have we in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. Now see to your own house, O David. So Israel departed to their tents. But Rehoboam reigned over the children of Israel, who dwelt in the cities of Judah. Then Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was in charge of the revenue. But all Israel stoned him with stones, and he died. Therefore King Rehoboam mounted his chariot in haste to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel had been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. Now it came to pass when all Israel heard that Jeroboam had come back, they sent for him and called him to the congregation and made him king over all Israel. There was none who followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. And when Rehoboam came to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 chosen men who were warriors, to fight against the house of Israel, that he might restore the kingdom to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But the word of God came to Shemaiah, the son of God, saying, Speak to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, to all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the rest of the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, You shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Let every man return to his house, for this thing is from me. Therefore they obeyed the word of the Lord, and turned back according to the word of the Lord. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in the mountains of Ephraim, and dwelt there. Also he went out from there and built Peniel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom may return to the house of David. If these people go up to offer sacrifices to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then the heart of this people will turn back to their Lord, Rehoboam king of Judah, and they will kill me and go back to Rehoboam king of Judah. Therefore the king asked advice, made two calves of gold, and said to the people, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, O Israel, which brought you up from the land of Egypt. And he set up one in Bethel and the other put in Dan. Now this thing became a sin for the people, went to worship before the one as far as Dan. He made shrines on the high places and made priests from every class of people who were not of the sons of Levi. Jeroboam ordained a feast on the 15th day in the eighth month that the feast that was in Judah and offered sacrifices on the altar. So he did at Bethel, sacrificing the calves that he had made. 
And at Bethel he installed the priests of the high places which he had made. So he made offerings on the altar which he had made at Bethel on the fifteenth day of the eighth month, and the month which he had devised in his own heart. And he ordained a feast for the children of Israel, and offered sacrifices on the altar and burned incense. And that concludes today's reading. Now in 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 15, it says, So the king did not listen to the people, for the turn of events was from the Lord, that he might fulfill his word. So whatever the Lord must do to fulfill his word, he does. That is why God's word is an immovable anchor in times of storms. Well, if you guys have any questions about today's reading, um, please comment below and I will answer all of your questions as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and being here with me on Time with Tiffy. I sure do hope you enjoyed today's reading. Please join me again on my channel tomorrow and share, comment, like, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to Time with Tiffy, where we sip on tea, sip flavory, eat treats of savory, and enjoy reading books of the Bible, doing Bible in one year. You all have a blessed Thursday. Until next time.